Hi, Hi, Bill. How's it going? It's going great, man. Going just, great. just a quick question for you in between your game here at yeah. GaryCon today. Yeah. You got a few new things coming up, and I was just curious about that we a do. little bit. We do. We've got uh, right now, currently, um, somebody wants to help me hold this. We have a Kickstarter that's at about $100,000. Over 1,025 uh, customers have already signed up for this. Hopefully, everyone in the room has a will. Um, for Rapid Ethic for 5th edition. And it's about a five to six hundred page book. It's going to be full color. Um, we spent about thirty thousand dollars on maps. Uh, so the maps are going to be really neat. One of them is over here on the table. You might want to get a shot of at some point. Um, but we had all the maps redone by our Austrian cartographer, Robert Outbauer. Um, he's made those um, uh, into just glorious color, beautiful maps. Uh, and then they'll also be available in for virtual tabletop with PSD files. Uh, and his individual packs, so the DM doesn't have to look through the book all the time if he wants. We're gonna have actually loose maps as well. Um, the, the maps are the maps are really the thing about it. Um, some of you will have bought that book before and may already even own portions of it for either Source and Wizardry or Pathfinder. And some folks even own chunks of it dating back to 3.0 DD. Um, so it's been around in various iterations for quite some time. Uh, the, uh, the the thing is with this one, of course, is and there's an Uncle Billy story hour part coming in in a second with part of it. But uh, we've added a whole bunch of new levels, uh, a couple of extra sub dungeons that didn't exist before. And uh, the one I wanted to mention there that is probably most uh, pertinent to that is that two years ago uh, at, uh, uh, I think it was GameholeCon, I ran into a guy who played my game back in 1977, 78, 79, 80, and he had moved away to Alabama when we were in high school. And um, uh, one of the things we did back in the day is when, because everything was handwritten in journals and stuff, right? One of the things we did back in the day was when the ogre got killed, you erased the ogre from the journal. And when the treasure got found, you erased the treasure from the journal. Because, of course, there was a living dungeon, right? And it did, a month later, you'd replace the ogre with a, you know, a bandit lair or a, whatever else you put new stuff in there. Um, but I actually didn't have the original copies of my notes from well, the dungeon, which was called Tunnels of Terror. And it was a sub-dungeon to Rapid Ethic that was a lower level area that people would go into um, when they did that. But when I ran into Richard, he had full copies of this stuff, Xeroxed. Wow. And uh, it was actually mimeographed, but it, we had it. Uh, and, um, and so I was able to resurrect uh, about nine levels of the dungeon that were gone forever. Uh, and all that's in this. Actually, all of it's in it except for one, which was a bonus a bonus goal. But we already hit that bonus goal like $40,000 ago. So the entire uh, Tunnels of Terror dungeon uh, in its original form has been added to Rapid Athletic. And that's, that was, from, for, for me, that was really neat because it was that was actually... Other than the level on the table, which was level 3A, and then the the, the monastery, um, not the monastery, but the, uh, the mausoleum and the ground level and the first and second levels, first, second, third, and fourth levels of the dungeon, um, that predates all of that stuff. So this is actually stuff I wrote when I was, you know, 13, 14 years old, back in a long time ago, and <laughs> more years than I care to admit. But the, the Kickstarter's done great. We've hit a dozen stretch goals at this point. Um, we've, we're honestly trying to figure out um, what else to add to that. Um, and uh, I think we hired, we hired Alex Cameron to do a bonus module that we're about to hit. We're probably 500 bucks off hitting or something like that. That's going to be um, adventures in, in the in the in the town that Matt described. There's Matt Finch, um, and uh, that's called Zelkor's Ferry. Um, back when Zelkor was a good guy before he became a lich and started living on the dungeon map that we're we're looking at now, um, he was a good guy and he had, they had a, he had a, he had a, a, he was a lord of a town there. Uh, and that, that, that town still exists. That's sort of the uh, the uh, uh, the keep on the borderlands, if you will, for the Rapid Athlete Dungeon. It's sort of the, the, the start, the staging point where everybody goes when they're going in and out of the dungeon. Uh, it's well supplied with things like clerics that can raise you from the dead, and alchemists, and things like that. But but Alex is writing a, a village-based adventure book to go with Zelkor's Ferry uh, as well. And that, that, that bonus goal we might have already hit. I haven't looked in a few hours. So that's kind of the main story on Rapid Athletic, unless anybody's got questions about it. But like I said, go go pledge now. Uh, I think we have about 20 days or 18, 19, something like that days left on the Kickstarter. Um, I, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but if we break our record, we already broke our record for a number of backers. Uh, we haven't broken our dollar record because another Kickstarter we had at a much higher price point on things. Um, but uh, we broke our number of backers record. If for some miraculous reason we can break our record on dollars, there will be a very large stretch goal. I just don't know what it is yet. We have figured it out. We, we did not expect to have uh, this level of response on the book this time. Um, so that's about it for that one. Yeah. And uh, upcoming projects, um, the, the main one um, is going to be the City of Brass. And we did um, some work on the City of Brass 
uh, back in 3.0 days. Um, and a guy named Casey Christofferson, who many of you, anyone who's played Castles and Crusades or has bought Necromancer Games products in the past, or Frog Hunt Games in the past, or Bard's Game, by, the, by Frog Hunt and by Necromancer, um, should know Casey's work. He's probably the most prolific writer uh, since 3.0 started. Uh, I think he's got about 90 or 100 books to his credit between the multiple companies he's worked for. Fantastic writer, um, does extra planar stuff. Uh, better than anyone um, I've ever met, except for, well, he's, I think he's as good as anybody. Um, and he's working on that with um, a combination of folks, including Anthony Pryor and, uh, uh, well, a bunch, bunch of other people. But he, he, the manuscript is completely written. Um, the art and the maps are being worked on right now. Uh, Alyssa Faden is going to be doing the, uh, uh, the maps for us. Um, a, lot, a lot of you probably seen her work in things like, I don't know, True Dungeon and, and um, uh, work she did for Zach Glazer's former company, uh, lesser known uh, list I was talking about. Who, and who else she worked for? A bunch of people. Oh, uh, she worked for a bunch of people. Um, she's yeah. working for something for Alex right now. For yeah, Cameron, yeah. For Gold, and, uh, for Gable Khan. She's made some of the best I've ever seen. So. Yeah, it's glorious. She, her maps are hers and Robert. We, 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 we don't lack for good cartography. Yeah, yeah. We've really gotten we've been fortunate with uh, artistic cartographers who do show up and show up on time and do really good work. Um, and then. Uh, the other, the other, the rest of the rest of the release schedule is a little fluid right now. We've got four or five other projects we're working on, uh, and then late this year, um, something will be interesting to all of my regulars in the room, I'm certain. Um, we're going to be uh, kickstarting our world setting for some, something that we've been promising to do for the last four or five years. Um, the guidance notes for the writers was something like 128 pages. So, uh, because we, as you can imagine, after producing 200 books or something like that. Coating all that together and making sure you get it right so it doesn't contradict the former books was a challenge. And, and a number of folks have been working on that. But the writer's guide's out. The example chapter um, that we've given everybody to work from, uh, Matt has drafted, and we're currently working on some kinks on. Um, that thing's going to be pretty spectacular. The map is beautiful. The, map is, the, map's the, the main map is, is, I'll call it done, but we're still probably going to edit it after we get the text. But um, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be something like, how many poster maps have we used? I would think we've either six or eight. Yeah, so either going to be six or eight, six panel poster maps. Um, we'll do big tapestries of it, of course, because that's, because we will. Because they're cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, um, <laughs> and uh, it is going to be, it's going to be uh, systemless uh, at this time. Because part of the thing is, all of the stuff that is either in Pathfinder or 5th edition or Swords and Wizardry versions are the detail areas of those. And so it's going to be very heavy geography based, political based, all that stuff will be explained. You can basically think about it as something like the world of Greyhawk was, with a higher level of detail and a lot bigger, is sort of what we're, we're aiming for. Um, and we're probably, I think, I think that one's going to hit the street so that it doesn't land on the tax numbers for this year. Um, um, but what would you? I, I've got two more things, and then I'm going to hand over to Jim. So um, the last two bits are we're going to be doing another charity fundraiser with Humble Bundle for fifth edition in June, um, and we're really excited about that. We raised almost $100,000 for charity in the last one for both uh, clean water and, and based in uh, most of that money was going to be focused on the northeast up in Detroit area and that type of thing because of the issues they've been having up there. And then the other half of the money uh, goes to the charity that's very near and dear to my heart, um, which is the Navy Marine Corps Relief Fund. And um, so we've done we've done a lot of charity fundraising for those guys. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We got to hand on checks for like $50,000 each this year. And we're going to be doing one more of those in June and we're going to be doing a third one uh, with some partners involved uh, in December next year. Again, we want to we want to get the checks in January. We're going to be in trouble. So uh, the partners in that, um, as you can imagine, are Cobalt Press. Of course, Wolfgang and I are very close friends, and they've been they've participated with us in the last two uh, the models that we did. And then um, and then uh, uh, Troller Games has graciously agreed to join the team and help, help with those efforts. Uh, and Gable Con, uh, Alex Cameron and his company Gable Publishing, um, also have joined on to help us with that. And so that's the main stuff I've got going. Um, I do want to talk real briefly and then turn it over to my friend Mr. Wampler here. Um, we've recently brought Jim in to do an entirely new game system uh, for, for Frog God, and we're going to put a lot of energy and effort into this line. Uh, we're really excited about it. And with no further ado, let's go to Jim. Hi. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Jim Wampler, and I uh, write both for Ribby Games and Frog God Games. If uh, after the new Tome of Horrors comes out, you run into a polychromatic belay, uh, if your DM didn't kill you, it was me. You can blame me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
I can clap now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the DM. I'm oh, yeah, oh, yeah, of course. You're set. You're set. And uh, the game that I'm uh, going to write for Frog God Games is called mm -hmm. Mega Heroes. It's a superhero RPG. And what makes it different is uh, it's not a D20 game. I, uh, as much as we all love D20, uh, for the superhero genre, I don't think it's ever been a really good fit. So I've written a proprietary game engine, and inspired by careful observation of the way Tim Cask and Bill Webb run their games. What do they use? They, they basically run the whole game with a D20 and a D6, so every action in the superhero game can be resolved with these two die. Kind of went the other way for Mutant Croc Classics, where you need 30 different <laughs> uh, But that's fun, too. Um, <laughs> And uh, what I, the design goals for this and what I want to accomplish is to uh, bring the old school sensibilities to the modern rule mechanics. So it's a brand new uh, game engine. I invented it and uh, it's fine tuned to give you the wham bam pow. So quick action resolution. Things happen fast. There's never been a superhero game that you could sit down and roll up a character in 15 minutes. You can do that in Mega Heroes. And, uh, Oh, sure. Uh, uh, because I'm an invariant uh, game engine hacker, what I've created is something that uh, eschews a lot of the genre conventions. There aren't character classes, there aren't levels, there's not really experience. There's a thing called reputation that you live and die by as your superhero. Uh, you can expend your reputation points two different ways. You can hoard them and bu start buying up your power, so that's a sort of level progression, except it's by power. That more naturally represents the difference from uh, Hulk first appearance, where you could still shoot him in the shoulder and he bleed, to the guy that can leap up into the stratosphere. Your character can do that as he gains reputation points, or they can be spent to change your die rolls similar to some other game mechanics. So you can hoard them or you can save them. And I'm very happy and proud to do this with Frog God yeah. Games. And uh, a lot like the post-apocalyptic game uh, I just wrote, this is something that, although I'm doing it in 2018, I've been thinking about this for a couple of decades now. I'm just going to pop in real quick because uh, this man was born to do it. Um, I'm not a comic book guy, though I now read them now. So I, I've talked to Jim um, sometimes almost daily now for three or four years, and he is the one person I think can, who enjoys fast-paced games and loves superheroes like nothing else. And so this is going to be real exciting. And we first made the logo that we have on display at the booth. I was jazzed. I'm like, that's awesome, and I hate superhero games, and I don't anymore. Honestly, I'm excited about it because what it does is it it makes a game that people tried to crunch really hard into like a D&D style game that wasn't made for it. And this is made by somebody who loves comic books and loves games and loves fast playing games on the table. So this is gonna be really great. Uh, a perfect example is, uh, with my game engine, you can do the scenes where the Avengers are fighting the Skrulls in New York City, and it's pow, 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 pow. Yeah. Yep, so it's fast moving. So. Uh, again, I'm like, Bill's running this right here. I <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't even climb on tables yet. So, so anyway, the last thing I want I wanted to do was uh, I want to I want to really thank Gary Klein, and um, this is a convention that um, we go to in Groves. I think there's about ten of us or eleven of us here from the company. Probably. Um, we like it. We'll be back. Uh, it's a well-run convention. The the people are great. The service is great. The auction's pretty good. Um, I spent a little more money than my wife probably would have wanted me to today, but what the heck. Um, Not my she's happy. Uh, I, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice because as, as I look around the room, I mean, some of these folks I've met at conventions, and I met, either met them here, or I met them at Game War, I met them in Dallas, and, and it's like coming home to a little family reunion for me because I've known, you know, I know 150 or 200 people that are at this show, and I've known some of them for 20 years. And so uh, it, it is really awesome, and it's, it's uh, you know, my son, you know, has, has had to stay home this time because he missed too much school. He's learning the, the hardness of high school, but uh, they can't just like skip out like you could when it's just purely doing grammar school. Um, but uh, everybody here knows knows my family knows or not everybody, but most people in this room know my family. They know my kids. They've grown up. You know, my kids have grown up with these folks, and it's awesome that we have you know three or four venues a year that we get, to get back together and uh, and, and play D and D, uh, and it, it's, it's awesome. I think I think we've had this room pretty much continuously hopping. Uh, since uh, what about eight o'clock in the morning on uh, Friday? Yeah. So. so thanks a lot. Wow, thank you. you hey guys, yeah. what do you think of that? <laughs>